So recently I started working on a character controller in Play Canvas to recreate the character controller from Super Mario 64. Obviously that game has really cool character movement and controls uh, and I wanted to explore that like and think about how they did that and make a uh, state manager basically for the animation and uh, character controller. Uh, I have an N64 controller with a USB hookup, so um, and I've used that to play um, emulator, emulated version of the game. Um, and so I'm also using the controller in Play Canvas to control Mario. So what I have here in Blender is uh, Mario's model loaded from Fast64 and a bunch of animations which I've loaded and imported animations from Fast64 as well. And I'm just showing you some of them right now. This is a star dance. Um, See, so yeah, there's a ton of animations. They have like over 200, almost 300, I think, animations for Mario. And uh, I haven't looked at the source code in, in C, I guess, for how they do state management. Uh, I've just sort of been trying to figure my own way through it. But yeah, so I have this um, this Mario with a bunch of animations in the uh, NLA editor. And each one of these animations, if you export um, if you export as FBX, each one of these animations is going to be a .glb file, and then you can like load that into the animation component. So here's a little video of some of the progress that I've made so far. All right, so I started off with just um, a fixed camera moving Mario around. Um, so here's state controls.js, and in here I just have uh, let me go back. <laughs> Um, what do I got? Um, yeah, so, okay, so in the state controls.js file, I want to be controlling which animation is playing based on Mario's current state. So I have a big global object called Mario state, which has like, you can see the top of it up here, like spinning, lava jumping, cannon shot. It has like jumping, falling, ledge grabbing, basically like kind of almost one thing for every possible animation. Um, so that's where I'm sort of starting and trying to separate state control from motion control and um, controller control, which I have, it's called joystick control, but within that joystick control.js, there's actually all the buttons. So I'm just trying, I have a global object for Mario's state and I have a global object for the controller state. So like the controller state just has uh, property for every button and a zero or a one. Um, yeah, okay, let's keep going. So then I got Mario running around, so if he's in the run state, um, we are activating the run animation. And then I got, you can see it went from tiptoeing to walking to running, and did that with that those if statements, so seeing if Mario's speed is between certain ranges. Um, and then here's the quick look at the animation state graph. You can see it goes from idle to tiptoe to walk to run. And yeah, there it is. Whole thing. Okay, so this is a fixed camera setup. So here it calculates Mario's position and the camera's position takes does some trig and figures it out. Um, so then here I'm working on C button controls for the camera. So when you um, change C, sorry, it's going really fast. Um, we change C, the camera rotates 45 degrees. And then I want it to be smooth, so I had camera target so camera state target 
Um, so instead of changing the camera state theta, the camera angle directly, I want to just change the uh, target and then have it move towards the target. So there's like a sort of a tweening, in betweening. So now it's smooth. Yeah, so if the camera is not at the target angle, make it 10% closer. And it looks pretty good. He kind of looks like a balloon Mario. Just how glossy he is. Um, okay, what am I doing? S some crazy math to... Oh yeah, so when he was running around there, the c he wasn't... Um, moving relative to the camera yet, I don't think. So this is to get him, or I guess he was. Okay, moving on to jumping. Yeah. Here, let's go back real quick actually because I didn't explain this at all. Okay, so this is, yeah, this is showing it working now where you have to take into account the input and the camera. So like you want Mario to move, if you're holding forward, you don't want him to just move in like the positive Z direction, no matter what you, if the camera is rotated around a certain way, he's not gonna be moving the positive Z direction anymore. He'll be moving at some angle. So you have to figure out that angle and that's what all this math here is doing. It's just some trig to like figure out what angle he's moving at. Um, yeah, this took some time to think through. I, I kind of, it's like the same thing I did in the P5JS version that I did. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, so here's jumping, sort of. I just figured out a way to, when I press A, have him move up as a start and it slowly falls back down when you let go of A. Um, and then at one point, all my animations got unplugged from my animation component, which really sucks. So now it really looks like a balloon the way he's floating, but I dragged them all back into the animation component, all those .glb files, and now he's running around again. So now I hooked in the jump animation. Now it's playing and then it's finishing and just bringing him back to his default pose. Uh, here I'm talking about getting the falls to look better, incorporating a fall time. So like when you hit, hit A, a fall timer is reset to zero, and then I'm using the fall timer to do like acceleration calculations. Okay, I added the land animation. And I guess that's it for today. Cool. Uh, word.